Hi, my name is Matt Honeycutt, and this is part two in my uh, short series on test-driven development. Um, so at the end of the last um, video, we ended up with um, creating um, some unit tests for our create user handler. So we refact we ended up we started with some very bad tests. Um, like I used to write tests a couple of years ago, and we refactored them into uh, what you see here. So we refactored them into very concise test methods that are only asserting or verifying one thing each. We consolidated the common arrange and act operations into an arrange and act setup method. Uh, we used mock to stub out the uh, service dependencies of our handler. And we created separate test fixtures for each arrangement that we needed to set up. So we have one test fixture for when the repository um, contains no users and then a different test fixture for when we want to um, simulate what the repository or how the handler is going to behave when the repository says hey I've already got this user I can't add them so it's better than where we started but it's still not ideal um, for one the names are still not all that great um, they're better than they were they do kind of describe what they're doing now but they could be better um, they could be more of a specification style names um, there's still going to be a lot of uh, repetition between your test fixtures so as we saw last time most of the arrange and act um, functionality here is the same between our two test fixtures. Um, more than that though, as we start creating test fixtures for even other types, um, we're going to see that we have this same pattern of creating arrange and act methods, setup methods, um, performing setup of our dependencies, injecting them into our um, class under test. That type of pattern is going to be repeated. Um, so we still have some repetition that we could um, eliminate. Um, but Worse than that, I would say, is that it really is still too much effort uh, to create these kinds of tests. It's what I call testing friction. Uh, no idea why that just popped up. Great. Okay, so hopefully this is still recording. Uh, anyway, aside from that glitch, let's move on. Um, so, you know, these are still not ideal. Um, so what I'm going to do now is show you how I'm writing unit tests today in... Uh, in rage feed. So to do that we're gonna um, just kinda jump in and create some specs using some helpers that are built into rage feed. So we're gonna use some templates uh, that I've created in ReSharper and some base classes and things like that. Uh, and then after we create the specs for our create user handler class then we'll go back and look at how the, uh, the utilities and things are implemented. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead and go to our user registration and let's go ahead and add a spec. So new from template, and you can see I've got my uh, ReSharper template for creating specifications. So these are going to be specs for create user handler. All right, so it goes ahead and stubs out this class for me, my specification class. So these are going to be specs for our create user handler. All right, and we have to give our context some name. So this is where we're going to um, set up basically the arrangement um, like we had in our previous test fixtures. Um, so we're going to do that here in our uh, base class, our abstract base class. So in this case, this is going to be the context or the, the setup for um, repository contains no users. All right, and we're going to use more of a behavior driven development style of testing here. So you'll see that the names kind of fit with that. So instead of arrange, act, assert, what we're going to see is things like given, when, and then. So given is when we, that's where we set up our um, context. So um, what the state of things are before we perform our um, operation on the class under test. In this case, we don't really need to do anything. Um, the repository is going to be empty unless we set up something that makes it look like it's not empty. So no need to perform any setup. So this is a very simple um, base class here. All right, so nothing too fancy so far. Uh, but let's go ahead and create some specifications. So when uh, the handler receives a request for a new user, given repository contains no users, all right, and you can see it went ahead and stubbed out this win method here. So this is where I need to perform my actual operation. So we're going to grab the reply from the handler. Uh, and actually, our base class has already created the handler for us. So you can see I have this SUT property that stands for system under test. 
Uh, this is a convention that I adopted. Uh, I don't remember where I saw it first, but uh, we use it at the, the company I work at um, now, and I've seen it some other places online too. So um, you may also see it called class under test. But this is basically our um, the class that we are writing test cases for. So this is our create user handler. So and it's already been initialized, instantiated, it's ready to go. So we can just call handle on it, and we can tell it uh, what request the process. So let's feed in, just like before, we're going to give it a username, an email, and a password. All right, and we need to stash our reply because we're going to need that in a couple of places. All right, and let's go ahead and create some actual test cases. So then the oops the reply should be success all right and let's check our reply that succeeded that should be true you can see i'm using some new extension methods which we'll take a closer look at later uh, but these just allow us to create a more fluent uh, style of test here so the test case reads very naturally so reply dot succeeded should be true. All right, and if we think back to how our uh, create user handler tests were before, there's actually four things that we need to verify. Uh, nor we're not really doing test-driven development anymore. We're basically just converting our tests to specs. Um, but really, you would do, you know, just like we did in the previous video, we would write one test case at a time, then go implement it, and so on. Um, but for now, we're just going to basically recreate these test cases in our specification style over here. All right, so next thing we need to do is check and see is the user marked as authenticated. So then the user should be authenticated. All right, and if you recall from last time, we had to create a mock authentic authentication service and we had to verify the expectation on that. Um, what we can actually do here is just grab the authenticator that was used after the fact. So authenticator equals get mock for my authentication service authenticator dot verify. All right, and next thing we need to do is see uh, was the user um, added to the repository. So let's go ahead and add that. Whoops. And I almost started to write the test case, but I can actually use these uh, live templates that make it even easier. So then the user should be added to the repository. And just like in our previous spec there, we can go ahead and say um, repository equals get the mock for uh, user repository. And we can verify that the add method was called. So it should have gotten a user where u.username is equal to user and u.email is equal to test at, test at user.com. All right. And the last thing we need to do is make sure that the user was emailed. All right, and just like before, we can grab the dispatcher. If I can learn to type, there we go. So there's our specs. Let's go ahead and run these. There we go, so all is well. All right, and just like before, we need to do some, um, some tests for what happens when the, uh, the username is in use. So let's go ahead and make a new 
uh, set of specifications. So when the handler receives a request with a user name in use given, and let's just go ahead and let's make a new uh, base class here. Repository. Whoa. Repository contains users. All right, and we'll need to go ahead and create this nested class. And now we're going to use the given method to establish some context here. So let's grab our repository mock. And let's make it throw an exception. when the add method is called for any user. All right, so we've established the context here. We need to uh, create our win here. So we're just gonna go ahead and invoke the handler. So just under test.handle. Let's go ahead and create our specification. So then it should not return success. All right, so let's run this, make sure our test passes. All right, and that's all there is to it.